The vitriolic controversy developing around the bell curve by Richard Herrnstein and Charles Murray has raised again questions about mental tests and their meaning. One of the charges made is that the tests are themselves unfair. But, long before the present controversy, someone replied to similar charges by pointing out, The tests are not unfair. Life is unfair. And tests measure the results. The same could be said of the charge that tests are culturally biased. Life is culturally biased. We live twice as long as people in some of the poorer parts of the world, not because we are more deserving, individually smarter, or otherwise more meritorious, but simply because we have the dumb luck to be born into a culture which produces cures and preventions for deadly diseases that have ravaged the human race for centuries. The cultural features which advance medical science have by no means been universal. Indeed, they have been fairly recent, as history is measured, even in the civilizations where they now exist. Any test which tests for those kinds of features must be culturally biased, indeed should be culturally biased. There may well have been individuals born into ignorant and primitive backwaters of the world who had brain cells fully as well functioning as those of Pasteur, Salk, or other medical pioneers, but who never developed the same capabilities and never left a trace of their existence to benefit the rest of mankind. If tested by our culturally biased tests, those individuals would undoubtedly have scored low, and should have, if our purpose was the practical one of picking people actually able to do the kinds of things that needed doing in medical science. What would have happened under other cultural circumstances is a cosmic question, a question for God, perhaps, but not for intellectuals who act as if they are God. As limited human beings, we must make our choices among the alternatives actually available. A culture-free society has never been one of those alternatives. Any test designed to predict future performances in any field or in any society is trying to predict what will happen in a given cultural context. There is nothing inherently sinister about this. These are the conditions we face, or should face. Few things are discussed as unintelligently as intelligence. Seldom do those who talk or shout about this subject bother to define their terms. Is intelligence the abstract potentiality that exists at the moment of conception? The developed capabilities with which the same individual faces the world two decades later? In between, all sorts of things have happened, and happen differently for different individuals and groups. An alcoholic or drug-addicted mother begins damaging her child even before birth. Her irresponsibility, brutality, or stupidity is almost certain to do more damage to the child in the years that follow. What good would it do us to know that child's innate potential at the moment of conception? It certainly would not enable us to predict what is likely to happen now that he is what he is. Suppose that we had such a miraculous test and discovered that we started out with an Einstein and ended up with an idiot. Would that mean that the test was unfair because it showed that he was an idiot? Or would it mean that life itself was tragically unfair, not only to him, but to the whole society that now has to contend with him as he is? Maybe such a test would have some social value as a means of shocking us into a realization of what enormities result from subsidizing teenage pregnancy, for example. Yes, it would be hard on all concerned, including the public, to deny welfare to the teenager. But would it be worse than what happens because we cannot bring ourselves to deny it? Such questions could at least be asked if we had the kind of miraculous test hoped for by some but there is no sign that we are even close to developing such a test. The much-vexed question of heredity versus environment, and of possible intergroup differences in inherited potential, are better able to produce heated controversies than enlightened reasoning. Does anyone seriously doubt that heredity plays some role in some differences, or that it is seldom the whole story? The bell curve itself says, it should be no surprise to see, as one does every day, blacks functioning at high levels in every intellectually challenging field. 
But that did not stop the shouts of those who are in the business of shouting. Anyone who actually reads the book, which may not include all of its critics, will discover that race is not even considered in the first twelve chapters. That is hardly what the book is about, though that is what the noise is about. My own view, as a former teacher, is that most American students, of whatever background, are operating so far below their capacity that the limits of that capacity is an academic question.